Good evening, Grizzlies, and welcome back to the Franklin Newscast. We will be continuing this show throughout the semester on Wednesday nights at 7.30 Eastern Time. Thank you for joining us. I'm Zach Roberts. We have a lot of news in store for you tonight, so hang tight and we'll be right back. March is a month full of basketball madness for colleges across the nation, and Franklin College is no exception. After winning the conference tournament, the Franklin College men's basketball team found their way on their own national bracket. The men's basketball team here at Franklin College won their way into the NCAA D3 championship bracket for the first time since 2008. This is in large part due to an unexpected run in their conference playoffs and a stellar performance from freshman Cody Samples in their championship game. Being a Franklin, the, the rivalry between Hanover and Franklin is just insane in general. And personally for me, that's close to home, so I had a huge, huge crowd from my hometown there. So that was awesome, but as a team, we all connected and just, I don't know, that's a memory that we'll all have for the rest of our lives. The Grizzlies drew the host school of Illinois Wesleyan for their first round matchup. Coach Leibowitz expected a good competitive game to come from this great opportunity. It's not just a good team they have this year. It's, it's really a premier program in the country. So I just think it's a great opportunity to go um, experience one of those places, compete at the highest level that Division Three has to offer. Going into the game, Samples felt confident about the team. We've all just been living on this run we made our own conference journey. So right now we kind of have a feeling that we can be anybody. So... We weren't really worried about who we got. We know we can compete, and we're just ready to make a run in this tournament. Unfortunately, after a strong first half, the Grizzlies ended the season with a 73-55 defeat, albeit being led by an 18.9 rebound showing from senior Matt Kraus. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Zane Spangler. Although their, say, although their season may be over, Franklin College basketball player Trey Flat, a.k.a. Trey Ball, has had success behind screens on the court and on your phone. Reporter John Asplin sits down with Trey Flat to ask how he became a basketball TikToker. Started playing basketball around like three, four years old. Um, I've always been playing basketball. My dad got me into basketball. He was a coach, so really just followed his footsteps. I had a couple offers from two NAI schools in Illinois and, and obviously Franklin, and I really just prayed about it for a long time, and I felt like Franklin was the best option just because of the location and the pricing, and it just, Felt like it felt best for me, and I lo love the environment, and and I've been I've been lucky to um, be able to come and room with Alex, so yeah, that's been uh, real fun. So the TikToks really just started going, and it's just been funny, and I've just enjoyed it, and everybody else kind of enjoys it. So I've actually started TikTok posting videos uh, when I got here. Um, just had a bunch of free time, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna post one, and I posted one, and then got like, I had a couple of videos that had like 100K and stuff, and so and then I kept going, and they kept, the views kept coming, and I was getting followers, and so I just kept doing it, and then, uh, yeah, I kept building from there, and then now, just using it as a stage, uh, just for the team and myself, and trying to start up, start a new YouTube channel. So yeah, just trying to uh, brand myself and uh, get followers and just to inspire others too and just through the game of basketball. And yeah, yeah it's, it's a way I've promoted um, my merch. Um, I, I didn't, my merch is pretty brand new. Uh, it's only been out for a, a month or so maybe, uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I've used uh, TikTok for that, mainly Instagram, but yeah. 
just to grow and really inspire others. And it's just uh, grateful that God's given me this opportunity uh, to be able to use this platform uh, just to inspire others and sh just show that um, uh, it, it was a dream of mine to be able to play college basketball and I'm doing it and that other, others can do it too. And the merch is just, it's just been some fun that I started and my family's bought into it and some of the guys on the team have bought into it and I'm just really grateful for that. And uh, shout out everybody that's cops up some merch and if you haven't, go ahead, so. The news of the Franklin College basketball team did not end with their season. Reporter Jack Berkey shares a big change in the program with us. Men's basketball coach Brian Lebowitz stepped down this month after eight years as a coach and two as a head coach. In the last two years, Lebowitz has led the Grizzlies to two HCAC tournament championships and took them to the 2022 NCAA tournament. Athletic Director Andrew Hendricks had this to say about the coach. He and I have been talking about it for quite some time and um, you know, ultimately he was looking for a new opportunity, so I, we're excited about the future. Despite having a winning record and enjoying postseason success, Lebowitz is leaving to use his Master of Business of Administration and move into the private sector, according to the Franklin. Whoever the college finds to replace Lebowitz will inherit a team with postseason experience that is bringing back all its players except for senior Matt Krause. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Jack Berkey. The men's basketball team isn't the only one receiving a head coaching change. The women's soccer team has finally found their new coach. Let's take a look with reporter Sam Brunsman. After former women's soccer head coach Kim Desir left to become the sports performance intern at Indiana University, the Franklin College women's soccer team has been looking for a new coach. On February 18th, Franklin College Director of Athletics Andrew Hendricks announced Jennifer Jackson as new head coach of the Grizzly women's soccer program. After a past coaching stint with Johnson and Wales College in Colorado, Jackson couldn't pass up taking the coaching job here at Franklin. We're pretty familiar with Franklin College as well. Um, you know, I've been in the, in the soccer industry for about 20 years now, so very familiar with different areas and different colleges. But when we moved here, um, it was kind of a goal, I guess, uh, to get back into college soccer. Knowing Franklin College is here, um, it was definitely tops on my list. So when I saw the job come open, I was incredibly excited. Uh, Jackson will begin coaching here at Franklin the week after spring break when she will hold spring practices and possibly fitness tests. Today I am here at Fought Stadium, the home of the men's and women's soccer team here at Franklin College. Both men's and women's soccer programs will begin their practices starting the week after spring break. Both coaches will run fitness tests this spring and hold practices and these practices must follow the NCAA guidelines unless they will be in big trouble by the NCAA. The women's soccer team has high hopes coming into the 2022 season and is looking forward to returning to the playoffs under their new head coach. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Sam Brunsman. Bringing us back to basketball, you don't have to be a big baller to enjoy playing basketball in March. Reporter Rias Moore shares with us how Franklin College allows everyone to get involved in the action. Last month, Franklin College has hosted their annual intramural basketball league. We went around to ask the players how things are going so far. The best aspect is competition. Um, everybody wants it, obviously, even in preseason. If you love sports and you love to play, um, going to A league. If not, you have to B league. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the worst is that we don't got refs. Everybody's following everyone. Uh, I think for me personally, like it's just fun, like. You can go out there, you can be really serious if you want to, but if you don't want to be really serious, you can still just go out and have a great time. So that's, it. that's how it is for me. Yeah, facts. Like when, you're, when the refs aren't calling a bunch of fouls and you're just out there playing basketball, it's just really fun. Yeah. So, so far, our highlight moment was definitely beating the guys you just interviewed. We beat them 43-17. Just want to throw that out there. Playoffs will begin Wednesday, March 16th at 8 p.m. in Spurlock Gymnasium. For the Franklin College Newscast, I'm Ryan Moore. Finding tournaments to play in has not been easy for all of Franklin College's teams. The men's golf team has struggled to find competitions to play in since their season started. 
The Franklin College men's golf team has begun their season. However, Franklin College, as well as many other schools, are struggling to find tournament opportunities due to budgeting issues. Coach Tom Hard states that, We work with what we have, and we have to raise money. A lot of schools who aren't fortunate enough to raise a lot of money don't get the opportunity to travel and play in other events. You know, when you come to a D3 program, especially at our, at our level, you just come to play. So it's a, it's a little bit disappointing to not be able to play as much, but... Uh, we'll work with it and hopefully get some more tournaments in at the end of the season. With the current struggles this season, the team has only played in a few tournaments so far. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Olivia Varvel. It's no secret that some of Franklin College's teams are historically more successful than others. The women's lacrosse team looks to change that with their continued growth. One team at Franklin that doesn't get much recognition is the lacrosse team. This season, the Grizzlies have gone one and four. You know, statistically, it's no secret. I mean, it's rough. It's a, a rough start for us. But I think every game we look for the little wins, and I think there's definitely a lot of small improvements that we make every game that hopefully, you know, closing out the, I guess you could call it preseason, um, before we hit conference, um, hopefully, you know, kind of things start falling into place, come conference, we can get a good seed and kind of do better in the tournament than we've done in the past, you know, the program. This team so far is definitely the best team that has come through the program. Um, like statistically it might not show, but you know, in comparison to two years ago when we're losing by 20, you know, the margin of defeat is definitely not as big as it has been in the past. There's definitely a lot to work on for sure. Um, even after I graduate, I'm sure it's still going to be a work in progress, but I think that goes for you know, every team. Coming back from spring break, the team will start conference play. For the Franklin Newscast, this is Taylor Dixon and Hope Shum. With so many sports going on, what do Grizzlies do besides athletics in their rare amount of spare time? Well, senior Henry Davidson, aka Henry D, shares his love of music with reporter Egan Keeperhill. Hello, this is Egan Keeper Hill with the Franklin Newscast, and today we're here with Henry Davidson. How you doing, Henry? I'm all right. How are you, man? Good, good. Uh, we're going to be talking about your music career and what kind of got you started in your music, but before that, uh, what, what are some hobbies you have outside of your music career when you're making music? What do you like to do in your free time? Uh, I like to run and play basketball and play some video games. Awesome. Uh, let's kind of get into the music thing. So what kind of got you started making music? Um, I started making music in middle school kind of just for fun and it was really bad and just embarrassing but uh, then I met a friend that uh, made music like serious and he kind of like showed me how to like actually make music and then so it's just kind of taken off mm -hmm. from there. And uh, if you weren't, uh, if you weren't spending your time making music, what, what else do you think you would have been filling your time up with? Because I'm sure that's pretty time consuming and it takes a lot of effort and energy. Yeah, I honestly don't know, and I'm glad I don't know because like music's a huge part of my life. I'm really glad I found it. Um, I'm sure I wouldn't be having as much fun with yeah. life if I didn't do Absolutely. music. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, how many songs have you released on Spotify and all these musical music platforms? Uh, I've released probably like 30 or 40, but I've recorded like several. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have Do you have a favorite song or a favorite album that you've made? Um. A lot of the newer stuff that I haven't released yet, um, I think is, is my favorite, so I'm mm -hmm. excited to drop that stuff. And you recently dropped a song this past week, didn't you? I did, yeah. What was, what was that called? It's called Blonde. Blonde? Yeah. Blonde? I've heard, I've heard that's, a, that's a good song, so yes. definitely everybody on here needs to tune in for that. Well, thank you for your time again here with us, Henry, and I hope uh, everyone tune in to his next new album coming out here soon, and his song he dropped last Thursday. Thank Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it, Henry. Thanks, man. <clears throat> Henry D. isn't the only Grizzly sharing his work with our campus. Students have formed a new Apogee mic tradition for all to see. Campus is Literary Magazine, Apogee, held its first open mic night of the year on Tuesday. There is a wide variety of poetry, original songs, and Aerosmith. This is the first year that Apogee's open mic is in person. All the previous series, they were online on Zoom. So last year during our digital one, our virtual one that we had, 
um, Kitley Kern, our editor-in-chief, um, she introduced our first person, but they weren't there. So um, we sat there for like five minutes, like waiting on this person after she introduced them. And I'm like typing in the chat, like, Kitley, they're not here. She just was not looking and instead just like waiting. And it just, oh, it just cracks me up every time I think about it. And I never let her forget it. So. She also said they feel very lucky to have the event in person now. Um, I think it went really well. It was the first um, like open mic that we've had in person since COVID. So yeah, I think people really enjoyed being able to like be in that physical like space together and share their creative work. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Alexa Shrake. The sound of music in Franklin continues as a local record store looks to share their love for music through business. What was once just a bond of music between two people has now turned into a business in downtown Franklin, and it's flourishing. Electric Key Records owners Corey and Aaron O'Sullivan started the business as a small section at the front of 1823 Bake House, but their business has grown enough for them to open their own storefront and online store. With all these accomplishments, the real reward for the business owners was their first sale. I remember the first time we made one sale, and it was like the best feeling in the world to like connect somebody to something that you had to offer and it made it worth it right then and there. Many of their sales consist of retired vinyl collectors searching for the records of their youth, but they also see a flow of FC students during big events like Family Weekend. No matter what age the customer, Electric Key Records are just happy to be able to connect their customers to a common interest, a love for music. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Zane Ballard. With all this talk about music, we need to talk about when the music stopped. A Franklin College professor has written and published a work of his own. Dr. Casey Hayes, director of choral activities and professor at Franklin College, has written and published his own book. The book dives into the history and life of Willy Rosen. It was really about getting the story out of someone who I feel is extremely important. Um, to dig him back out of history and let people know about him. Rosen wrote music in Germany in the early 1900s until the Nazi regime came into power. He was then sent to a camp with other writers and performers in which they created some of the finest cabaret in Europe that no one knows about today. Hayes believes that readers from all demographics can learn something from this story. I think the biggest one is that no matter your circumstance or your situation, that there are there is always beauty, and in this case, um, in Villy's life, in, in the absolute worst possible conditions that we have known in concentration camps during World War II, he was able to bring beauty, music, to people that had really resigned to the fact that they would never, ever experience that again. Those interested in picking up a copy can buy it in the Franklin College bookstore or at any other major provider. For the Franklin College Newscast, I'm Zane Spangler. A Franklin College student has decided to get in on the art business as well, and reporter Isaac Gleitz gives us an inside look of how she began selling her own work. When Senior Haven Tunin says she's going across campus to throw, she isn't headed to Dame Mole like these grizzlies. Instead, she's headed to the ceramics studio in Hoover Klein Hall to throw on the pottery wheel. Tunin has launched her own business selling mushroom mugs, which keeps her pretty busy. Last semester, she clocked in 220 hours in the studio, even though she commutes to campus from Indianapolis. She likes the campus studio because there are no limitations. This like gives me a ton of creative freedom since I'm literally able to make whatever I want in here. After graduation, Tunin plans to move into her grandmother's house and use her garage as a studio, after a lot of cleaning. Making her studio will probably take a while, she said, because it's going to be a hefty financial investment. She plans to take a break from her business after graduation to make it happen. The only problem with her plan is that she feels guilty when she slacks off. I don't really know where the motivation comes from. I feel like there's a force from the universe that like makes me create. Right now, I don't necessarily want to be in here, but I know if I wasn't, I'd be sitting at home and just like pissed at myself that I wasn't in here. Tunin said her mentors, professors, and friends have encouraged her to pursue art, 
and she feels ready to walk across the stage at commencement in May and set out on a life of her own. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Isaac Lights. That's it for tonight's show, but we'll be back. Join us next time, and thanks for hanging in there with us. I'm Zach Roberts. Good night, Grizzlies.